Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So far you have learned what is a formal definition of a language and uh, how to represent them finitely, uh, finite representation. In that context you have learned the notion called regular expression to represent a language. Now there you have understood already that uh, some of the languages you could represent uh, through regular expression and some of them you could not. Uh, so, in this context, we will introduce a better tool uh, to represent a language finitely, uh, a finite representation. So, in the context, we are introducing the tool called grammars as naturally one may expect uh, to understand a language. So, Again here, the notion of gram the uh, word grammar is familiar to you and you know the grammars in the context of natural languages. Now, first here we formalize the notion and uh, then we make you familiar with this formal notion through certain examples. First, what is the understanding that you have about grammar? That is, a grammar of a language is a set of rules which are used to construct or validate a sentence of the language. That is how we know uh, a grammar, that is the expectation that you have. Now, to formalize this notion, we have to first look at certain general features of the grammars that we know already, from which the important features may be captured and abstracted to formulate the notion of a grammar. So, when you are looking for the general uh, grammars, that means in the context of natural languages, you may first look at. So, from English, let us consider this sentence, the boy ate an apple. If you question that this is grammatically correct or not, let us look at this way, the article the followed by the noun boy form a noun phrase, the article an followed by the noun apple forms a noun phrase and ate is a verb. And now, if you choose a sentential form SVO, so called subject verb object, now you can understand that subject or object can be a noun phrase and uh, you can validate this sentence. For example, you can uh, validate this sentence or you can verify that the sentence is gram uh, grammatically correct in English. So, in the, in the, as I am showing here, you may possibly validate that. Take the sentential form, take the sentence that rule subject verb object, then subject you may place by noun phrase and then the noun phrase can be an article followed by noun that rule you may use and the article you place by the article the and then noun by boy and then verb by 8 and in case of object you are choosing now noun phrase the rule and uh, the noun phrase can be article followed by noun and the article here you are choosing an and the noun apple. So, the boy ate an apple can be parsed or can be verified through English grammar in this way. Now, to formalize the notion of grammars First, let us see in this context what type of words that we have considered. The words like a and the boy book is this kind of words that you have encountered and the words like article, noun, verb, noun phrase this kind of words that you have encountered. So, what is the difference between these two? If you look at the second type of words that means article, noun, verb this kind of things 
you have to address them further. That means, if you say noun, what is that noun that you are going to talk about? So, you have to tell something about that further. And that means, these are, this is not getting terminated. So, you have to further tell something about this. Now, if you look at the first type, that one, if you say an, the, boy, this kind of words, there is nothing further you are going to say in English. So, that way, we may call them as terminals and the first one, we call them as non-terminals. Thus, informally, when I am talking about grammars, what, what are the things that uh, you have understood here is a set of non-terminal symbols have to be there and a set of terminal symbols and a set of rules. For example, noun phrase can be an article followed by noun or a subject can be a noun phrase, this kind of rules that we have used in the derivation. So, a set, a set of rules that you are requiring and uh, now a distinguished non-terminal symbol. That means, for any sentence, wha what is the main target in a grammar? So, you are going to validate sentences or you are going to derive a sentence through the rules that are existing in the grammar. So, essentially we are targeting to derive a sentence. So, a distinguished non-terminal symbol that you are indicating as a sentence. So, that is to derive any sentence from there. Now, formally, we will introduce this as a combinatorial system as a quadruple. I am writing here G n sigma p s, where n is a finite set, we may call them a set of non-terminal symbols. Sigma, a finite set again, a terminal symbols and s belongs to n. That means, this is a non-terminal symbol that we call them start symbol. This is representing the uh, phrase sentence and p is a finite subset of n cross v star, the called set of production rules. What are the rules that we are here having that uh, they are called production rules and here v is equal to n union sigma. Now, let us look at that set n cross v star. Here, the elements are of the form in n cross v star, a non-terminal symbol and uh, a string of v star. That means, here alpha is a mix of terminals and non-terminals, a string or mix of terminals and non-terminals and uh, this A is a non-terminal symbol. So, the rules are essentially pairs which are of the form A alpha. Now, for convenience since we are calling it as a rule, we write A alpha in this way. and call A can be alpha. And now, before going to talk about the sentences that are to be validated through a grammar and our sentence which can be derived or generated using a grammar, we require certain uh, concepts. So, let us first look at those concepts. Let us consider a grammar G n sigma p s with v is n union sigma. First, we define a binary relation that is represented here with the implies symbol with a with a subscript g on v star that means we are defining a binary relation on v star v star again i re, uh, repeat this is a strings with mix of terminals and non terminals how we are defining this relation alpha related to beta using this relation if and only if alpha is of the form alpha 1 a alpha 2 beta is of the form alpha 1 gamma alpha 2. Here, the relation between alpha and beta that for a non-terminal symbol A that we are replacing by gamma. That means, if it is replaced by a production rule, then we say they are related. So, that means, here and A gives gamma is a production rule in this grammar for all alpha beta in V star. And now, the relation this is called one step relation on G, because by applying one rule 
from alpha you get beta in one step so we call this as one step relation on g and if alpha gives beta in one step uh, we call this alpha yields beta in one step in g now another notation here this relation with a superscript star if we write that is the reflexive transitive closure of the relation one step relation that we have defined that means if you take any two strings alpha beta in v star we say alpha related to beta with respect to this reflexive transitive closure of one step relation if and only if through finitely many strings these two are related that means there exist a number n greater than or equal to 0 and strings alpha not alpha 1 and so on alpha n in v star such that this alpha not is alpha and you can you can get in one step alpha 1 from alpha not and so on alpha, alpha n you will get it from alpha n minus 1 that alpha n is beta so that means essentially this reflexive transitive closure the relation reflexive transitive closure is by through finitely many steps of one step relation you are relating two strings Now, for alpha beta, if these two are related through this reflexive transitive closure relation, that means through finitely many steps, if you can uh, get alpha uh, beta from alpha, then we say beta is derived from alpha, or you can say alpha derives beta. Further, this expression alpha gives beta in finitely many steps is called derivation in G. The notion of derivation is introduced here formally. Now, if you consider a derivation that is alpha gives alpha 1 in one step, alpha 2 in second step and so on alpha n that is beta. If this is a derivation then the number of steps in this will be counted and say that is the length of the derivation. In this case you can see that here are n steps and thus we call the length of the derivation is n and in which case one may denote by taking n in the subscript uh, uh, superscript of the relation. Now, we let us have this convention because every time we are using this subscript g in a given context if you are handling with only one grammar g then you may simply use the symbol implies instead of using this implies with a subscript g. Now, if you consider a derivation alpha gives beta infinitely many steps, then we also call beta is an yield of the derivation. Now, in a if you take a string alpha in V star, we call this as a sentential form if that can be derived from start symbol s. So, in the grammar under consideration you have a start symbol s from which if you can derive this string alpha then we say this is sentential form. In particular if this alpha is only with terminal symbols that means if it is an element of sigma star then that sentential form is called sentence. In this case we say alpha is generated by g and now we formally define the notion of language generated by a grammar g the language generated by g denoted by l of g is the set of all sentences generated by g that is l of g is set of all x in sigma star those terminal strings which can be derived from the start symbol now if you look at an arbitrary rule in the grammar that we have defined it is of the form a gives alpha or a goes to alpha if you consider the sentential form that means this string x 1 and so on x k a x k plus 1 and so on x n if this is a sentential form that means this is derived from the start symbol and as this is a goes to alpha is a rule by applying this rule in this sentential form you can get a next step which is of the form x 1 x 2 and so on x k alpha x k plus 1 and so on x n. Now, in this sentential form the replacement is independent of the neighboring symbols of a. 
because the production rule is of the form a goes to alpha wherever a is occurring you can substitute a by alpha to get a sentential form resulting like this res resulting like this now as this replacement is independent of a one may call a is within the here you observe that first the non terminal symbol a one may say this is within the context of x i s the neighboring symbols x 1 x k the neighbor symbols of a are say for example here x k x k plus 1 or if you go little more x k minus 1 x k x k plus 1 these are the neighboring symbols of a now when one may call a is in the within the context of x i s depending on the neighboring symbols that you are uh, considering now hence the rule a goes to alpha is said to be of context free type the reason why when we are substituting a by alpha we are not worried about the neighboring symbols of a and thus this rule is called context free type and as the type of grammar that has defined so uh, now here we call them as context free grammars or simply cfg context free grammar now the notion of context free language is as follows a language l is said to be context free if there is a context free grammar g that generates l that is l of g is equal to l the language generated by g should be equal to l now let us look at certain examples to understand the notion defined here consider the cfg n sigma ps where n is singleton s sigma is set of ab and the production rules we are considering s gives ab s gives bb s gives aba s gives aab finitely many rules and uh, left side only one non terminal symbol is only one non terminal symbol is there and right side mix of terminals and non terminals are allowed here we are considering only terminal symbols for example here ab and bb here aba here aab here finitely many rules are under consideration now what let us look at certain examples of derivations in g s derives the string ab in one step by using the rule s gives ab let us look at another derivation s derives ab by using the second rule s gives b sorry s gives bb you can derive the terminal string bb in one step again similarly s derives aba you can apply third rule within one step you can get the terminal string also s derives aab and can we have some other derivations in this grammar there is only one non terminal symbol you will start from the non terminal symbol a and you have to apply one rule to get the next string uh, 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 sentential form uh, in a derivation under consideration the possibilities that you understand here you may apply the first rule or second rule third rule or fourth rule whatever that you are applying for example if i apply first rule s gives ab then after that to continue this derivation you require a non terminal symbol on the in this and there is no non terminal symbol here and thus you cannot continue this derivation by starting with first rule if you want derivation with more than one step for example if i consider the second rule s gives bb you have the similar situation because right side immediately you have got a terminal string similarly third uh, third rule or fourth rule because every rule here essentially is of the form x s goes to say some x where x is in sigma star a terminal string i don't have option to continue a derivation further and thus here you can understand that any derivation in this grammar is essentially can have only one step and uh, in one step here you can generate ab or bb aba or aab there are only four strings that you can uh, derive here thus you can understand that the language generated by this grammar is containing 
precisely four strings a a b b a b a a a b and these four strings can be generated to understand that this set is equal to l of g every string in this set can be generated by g as we have shown derivations here and these are only strings that can be generated in this grammar thus the language generated by g is this let me consider another example by extending this notion whatever the example I, we have defined here in the previous example once again here we have considered four strings and this is the grammar we have defined now if you take any finite language you have finitely many strings in that say l equal to x1 x2 and so on xn finitely many strings are there now if you consider the finite set p containing s gives x1 here we are introducing this notation r symbol r x2 r x3 and so on r xn so here the notation what we are introducing here is in the earlier case s goes to ab is one production rule s goes to bb is one production rule what the notation we adopt instead of writing two rules separately when the non terminal symbol left side is both are having s we may write it as s goes to ab r bb this is how we read and in the present context when you have finitely many strings x1 x2 xn the finite language by considering the production rules s gives x1 r x2 and so on r xn there are n number of rules by considering we can generate the language x1 x2 xn now here one more notation that we are adopting namely if you are given just set of production rules in this context s goes to x1 r x2 xn we are not giving what is that quadruple for the grammar we may not specially specify whatever the non terminal symbols that are occurring in this set that you can consider in n for example if you have here only one non terminal symbol and sigma whatever the terminal set under consideration and production rules are defined and uh, the start symbol s is in not uh, from non terminals so using this notation just by stating the set of production rules one can always write the quadruple g and thus using that notation i am simply stating note that the cfg singleton s sigma ps generates the language l now let me give one more example consider the cfg with precisely the following production rules one s gives 0s to s gives 1s s can be epsilon now we observe that the grammar g generates 0 1 star here i am not stating the quadruple only the production rules are stated if one is interested to write it is easy in this context you have again only one non terminal symbol terminal symbols are 2 0 and 1 the production rules are stated and the start symbol s you consider and thus the quadruple g is this in the present context and if i call the grammar g we observe that the grammar g generates 
sigma star here sigma is 0 1. So, all the strings over sigma can be generated in this using this. To prove this first what are all the possible strings that you can generate using this using these rules that we have to evaluate. First of all can we generate some string through these rules that we have to understand. For example, using the third rule s goes to epsilon one can clearly generate in one step the empty string epsilon or if you consider the first rule you can get this 0 s in one step and if you use the third rule then 0 epsilon that is equal to 0. So, the string 0 can be generated using this grammar that means you are generating certain strings through these rules. Similarly, by using second rule one can derive 1 s and applying third rule you may get simply 1. So, 0 can be generated, 1 can be generated. If you want 0 0 to be generated, if you want 0 0 to be generated consider the first rule once you can derive like this and then you apply once more the first rule you can generate the string 0 0 s. Now, if you apply the third rule 0 0 epsilon the empty string epsilon that is essentially 0 0. So, 0 0 can be derived and you understand here through these rules the three rules s goes to 0 s, s goes to 1 s, s goes to epsilon you are deriving certain strings and whatever the terminal strings that you are deriving they are over the set 0 1 and thus first you understand whatever the strings that are generated through this grammar the L of g is a subset of sigma star because sigma star is the set of all strings over 0 1 and thus L of g is a subset of sigma star. Conversely, we have to understand that every string of sigma star can be derived in this grammar. Take an arbitrary string x in sigma star. If it is empty string using third rule in one step you can derive it. Otherwise, if you write it as a 1 a 2 a n where a i either 0 or 1 some n number of n length string you know, if you consider. Now, this a 1 a 2 a n we can derive as shown below. This a 1 can be 0 or 1 if it is 0 then apply rule 1 to get that s gives a 1 s. If it is 1 then you can apply rule 2 to get 1 s here. Similarly, to derive a 2 there either it is 0 or 1 as discussed here if a 2 is 0 apply rule 1 to get a 2 s here if a 2 is 1 we apply rule 2 to get a 2 a 1 a 2 s and continue this to get a 1 a 2 a n s and at the end apply rule 3 and nullify the non terminal symbol here to get a 1 a 2 a n that is what is x. So, any string x a 1 a 2 a n can be derived in in n number of steps you are getting a 1 a 2 a n in the first step you are getting a 1 in the second step you will get by the uh, time of second step you get a 1 a 2 and following s and in n number of steps you are getting a 1 a 2 a n s and in n plus 1th step you can nullify this s by substituting empty string and thus you are getting a 1 a 2 a n. So, this n length string that you are deriving we are deriving here in n plus 1 steps the length of the derivation here is n plus 1 and an n length string can be derived here in exactly n plus 1 steps. And thus you understand that any string or sigma star can be derived through the grammar hence 
x is in L of g. So, we have got the reverse in, uh, inclusion and thus L of g is sigma star. Let us consider one more example. If you consider the language m t, the language m t or any alphabet you can consider, we can say this can be generated by a CFG. How do you give the grammar? I give you one method here. If you consider the grammar singleton as sigma p s where p is empty, the set of production rules we did not put any restriction we simply said that this production rules is a subset of n cross v star where v is sigma union n. There is no restriction on this, it can be empty set also as a subset being a subset of this. So, if you choose the production rules to be empty, then we are not going to derive or we will not be able to derive any string in this grammar and thus the language generated by the grammar g defined here is empty or if you want some production rules, you can follow this method to if you consider a grammar in which each production rule has some non terminal symbol on the right hand side, some non terminal symbol on the right hand side on each production rule. So, what is the situation that you get? That means, say finitely many production rules that you, you would have. Let me take for example, A goes to say alpha 1, A 1 goes to alpha 1, A 2 goes to alpha 2, and so on some finitely many rules a k goes to alpha k finitely many rules and the assumption here is each alpha i has some non terminal symbol some non terminal symbol on its right hand side. Now, you start the derivation you may start with the derivation whatever is the start symbol s yes. if start symbol is equal to a i for some i here you may get that alpha i and then in alpha i whatever is the non terminal symbol is appearing uh, and we will continue to some a j you substitute that and you are getting some string beta where beta is obtained from alpha i by substituting the non terminal symbol that you have. Say for example, you have a j in alpha i that means, alpha i is of the form some alpha 1 alpha 2 and by substituting what is the beta I have got is alpha 1 a j substituted by alpha j and alpha 2 and clearly as we as per our assumption oh, let me call it as uh, instead of writing alpha 1 alpha 2 which I have used here already. Let me call it as alpha dash say alpha double dash. What we have got beta is alpha dash alpha j alpha double dash and in beta you can clearly see that there is at least one non terminal symbol because alpha j has a non terminal symbol. Now, there may be non terminal symbols in alpha dash and alpha double dash also. Now, since you see in alpha j there is a non terminal symbol for example, if you choose and substitute and if you if you continue like this every time you are observing that there is one non terminal symbol in each step that you are continuing to. So, you are continuing to have non terminal symbol always in each step and thus any derivation that you start with it will never terminate and thus no terminal string can be generated using this grammar and thus this CFG with this property you will derive only empty set. So, no, thus you understand that in either case if you follow method 1 or follow method 2 the grammar under consideration generates the language empty.
let us look at some more so far what i have considered here i gave some grammars and understood that the language is generated by those grammars and now in case in the previous case i have considered empty language and given an appropriate grammar to generate empty now let us consider this because what are the examples that i am starting with they are already known to you that they can be represented by regular expressions because the finite set with four strings you know the regular expression of that and uh, finitely many strings that is a regular language sigma star that is a regular language and empty this is a regular language now one more here in the consideration you know this is also a regular language and as we are defining a contextual grammar for this languages we are also observing that these languages are context free so a typical string in this is having k s it can be empty string 2s 3s and so on a power k now for this purpose if you consider anyway you require one non terminal symbol as a start symbol let me call as i said s i have to derive a so let me take a and i should be able to further continue so because i am going to produce only s so if i consider the rule s goes to as i can have this kind of situation s gives as and using the same rule i can derive 2s and again apply the same rule you can get 3s because this s substituted by as using this rule and if you continue this you can produce n number of s after n steps if you want if you terminate this by substituting s goes to epsilon the empty string then you can terminate this that is what is a power n and you observe that by considering these two rules s goes to as s can be epsilon you can clearly see that in n plus 1 steps you could generate a power n thus if i consider the grammar with this production rules that is i am not going to write the quadruple as i said you can consider this non terminal symbol and terminal set is singleton a and production rules are stated here so just stating this we are stating the grammar so let g be the grammar with this following production rules the claim now is the language generated by this grammar is and as you understand here that what are the strings that you can derive using l of g that first we have to look at and if sigma is singleton a under consideration sigma is singleton a under consideration what is sigma star what is sigma star this is precisely a power k such that k greater than equal to 0 and one can observe that whatever the strings that you are generating in this grammar is a subset of sigma star 
as discussed earlier. Now, to show that any string of sigma star can be generated, we can look at the previous example and quickly understand that we have considered by taking sigma to be singleton a. So, thus you are understanding that L of g is equal to sigma star. So, what is the point here is we are treating by considering sigma to be singleton a as a special case of the previous example. And thus you understand that a power k k greater than equal to 0 this is context free because if you consider sigma to be singleton a this is what is sigma star. Let me take let me discuss one more example this you have not seen as regular earlier the language a power n b power n such that n greater than equal to 0 a power n b power n such that n greater than equal to 0. So, how does a typical string look like in this language epsilon by taking n equal to 0 you can have a b here by taking n equal to 1 you can have a a b b a a a b b b and so on this is a this kind of strings are there in this language. Now, look at the pattern of the strings here corresponding to each a here you have a b in this you see there are two a's here two b's three a's three b's let me look at let me put the correspondence like this this a is corresponding to this b. So, here let me put the correspondence like this and similarly here this a is corresponding to this b and second a is corresponding to second from the right side. Suppose, if you give this correspondence then you can think of the production rules that can generate this language because in each step because we have to remember that a and b are having this kind of correspondence. So, if I write the production rule like this if I wrote the production rule like this and this production rule if you keep applying in each step you can generate left side n number of a's and similarly corresponding to each a right side n number of strings. Let us look at a derivation apply this rule to get a s b and you have I have written only one rule. So, you have the choice of applying the same look that 2 a s sorry here it is b 2 b's are generated. Now, if you apply this rule once again what do you get a a a s b b b now you understand how to terminate this derivation by choosing the rule s goes to epsilon. Now, these two strings this uh, sorry these two rules can generate any string of this language and uh, conversely any string of this language any string of this language let me call L can be derived through these two rules. Now, if you consider grammar with production rules as defined here S goes to A S B R epsilon the grammar with this production rules. You can observe that the language generated by the grammar G is L a power n b power n such that n greater than equal to 0. You can take this as an exercise. That means, what we have to show a string generated in G is of the form a power n is of the form a power n b power n that is in L and if you take 
any string in L that means a string of the form a power n b power n can be generated through G. So, prove this as an exercise. Let me give, let me discuss some more examples. Or any alphabet, if you consider the language, x power r, what is this language? All those strings in sigma star, which is equal to its reversal. That means, the set of all palindromes. If you consider this, the previous example, the concept of previous example can be used to define a grammar for this language. For simplicity, let me consider sigma to be a b. From that you can understand to give a grammar for an arbitrary alphabet sigma. What is the situation here? If you take any string x in the language L here, okay, let me call uh, L for this language. The string x, what is the form? A1, A2, and so on, An. There are two cases. One, There may be even number of symbols here, this is of even length, it may be of odd length, odd length. If it is of even length, what do you have? A 1, it is of the form A 1, A 2 and so on A k, let me write and then thereafter A k plus 1, they are say B 1, B 2, B k. It is of length 2 k, n is equal to 2 k. And if it is of odd length, I may write it as a 1, a 2, a k, a k plus 1 and then let me write say b, b 1, b 2, b k. Let us write like this. This even length string, this is odd length string. Here n is of the form 2 k plus 1, this is the length. Now, look, since it is a palindrome, the symbol a 1 should be equal to this b k, a 2 should be equal to b k minus 1 and so on, this a k should be equal to b 1. In case of odd length, the same situation on either side and a k plus 1 can be anything between a and b. Now, you can think of production rules for the sigma set of a b and give a grammar which generates palindromes. Try this as an exercise, try this as an exercise and hence you can extend this for any arbitrary alphabet sigma.